Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. The wife wanted garlic steak bites, so I thought, let's make garlic steak bites. If you want to see how we make it, here we go. To get started, let me show you what we're working with. I'm going to keep it basic, but I'm going to incorporate a ton of flavor with basic ingredients, okay? Obviously butter, you got your garlic. We're we'll making a little garlic paste with the salt. I'm going to throw a little horseradish in there. It gives it a pop. A little W sauce, use it all the time. I think these components right here are going to work fantastic. I know a lot of people are going to say, man, I wish it would be nice to afford filet. Well, we've always spoken about how we can buy our ribeyes at such a cheap price through certain times of the year. And we buy them at whole, we basically trim them and cut them down ourselves. I've got a video on how to do uh, the tenderloin the same way because we're lucky enough maybe six months ago to find tenderloins on sale for about $14.50 a pound. Well, when you buy a whole one and break that down, typically a filet is roughly six to eight ounces. So you can imagine, let's just do eight ounces. You're looking at seven bucks um, for, a, for a filet, right? You're not getting that at a restaurant, you're getting that at home. The important thing is how you protect it. So we vacuum sealed it, and this is the tail end. You can see right here, whole tail filet. So when I butchered this myself, I was just able to capitalize. We vacuum sealed it, and this is a perfect video for this. Four tablespoons of butter. I've got four large cloves of garlic. We're gonna make a garlic paste out of it. Finely diced, add some salt, add some oil, and then we're gonna start mashing it with our knife. Over and over. You can see that it's getting a lot better now. Adding that salt helps break down that garlic. Add a little oil. And there we go, perfect garlic mash. Not looking for a lot, about a quarter teaspoon of horseradish. This is the uh, the finely ground, creamy style, and about a tablespoon of W sauce. With your softened butter, we're just gonna mix those ingredients together. And when it's all mixed, it should look something like this. The garlic's so small and pasty that when you put it on the griddle, you're not gonna worry about it burning because it happens so fast. That's why I wanna incorporate all the ingredients right now. I didn't wanna do these individually, because I want everything to come together extremely fast because we don't want to overcook our steak bites. So let me show you what I did. This is obviously the widest part. I'm not looking at temperature. I'm not looking at uh, anything. I'm looking at more evenness. So since this is the larger part, let's move that over. Now you can see right here, it's pretty squared up. You tuck that in, that's pretty squared up. That's kind of like my idea about it. Now let's season it up. Two of my favorite seasonings, we're gonna do a very light coat um, on the base for this, uh, cause a little beef, a little grill, little uh, smoke flavor in it, and then hit it hard with that shake that, that salt, pepper, garlic, and butter, which hopefully will uh, mimic the flavors that we just made. You notice how light I'm going on here? Just a nice base coat. And then go a little bit heavier with that shake that. It might seem like a lot of seasoning now, but you gotta remember, this is gonna carry the whole flavor profile for the bites. We're not gonna season this again. We got the Traeger rock and rolling today. I got this side on high, this side on low, and this side off. You can see how much white smoke we're rolling right here. You can see the difference in the, uh, the cooking temperatures. Throw a little avocado oil down. And now we're looking to sear all sides. We want a rare. We do not want this to be medium uh, medium rare or anything like that because we are gonna put it back on the griddle for the bites. Ooh, that's a nice smell. See the nice color we're working with? All that reaction. Whoa. 
while our steaks are resting just for a few minutes, you don't want to cut it right away because you don't want to lose all those juices. I'm just turning the griddle down to like a medium heat now because uh, now we're really going to fine tune. All right, the steak's rested. Now I'm just going to cut it into basically bite-sized pieces. That's how you get steak bites. I'm going to try my best to cut them into uniform pieces. Alrighty, our steak bites are cut. You can see right here what we're working with. So if you like it done to this doneness right here, obviously you need to back off on how long you sear it. If you like it well done, there's another channel out there for you, welldonesteaks.com. All right, this is gonna happen extremely fast. I'm gonna keep the talking to the minimum. It's more about technique and then uh, we'll go from there. So let me show you. Very light coating of oil. If you notice, you notice how white my griddle looks. That's because it's burning the oils. You see the smoke. We always talk about when you season a griddle, how to season a griddle while you're cooking. This is no different. You're literally in the seasoning process. So let's get the griddle moist so it's not so dry. save just about a tablespoon and right before I take it off one more batch that's going to keep the garlic a little bit more fresher have a little more bite to it a little parsley They're really good. <laughs> I do think we should have added some blue cheese crumbles at the end. Well, yeah, you can add anything you want to. Yep. Bacon crumbles. So I struggled when my wife told me to make these because the very first thing I thought of was execution. This is one of the things that although you can do it a thousand different ways, I thought if you execute it perfectly, it can come out great. Same thing with most things, right? But there's a lot of things you can get away with in cooking in general, right? You don't really care like if your ground beef is overcooked, you just drain it and put it in whatever. But I told her how I was going to make it. And she said, why wouldn't you just add the ingredients individually? And I thought, because it's such a fast paced dish that I think I want everything combined and ready to go. I wanted that garlic to be extremely soft and small, kind of like that paste that we made along with the butter and then whatever else we added. And the point was because once it gets on the griddle, you don't have much time to play around. Could you do it individually? You could. Uh, I think just think that garlic butter just in my mind to keep playing over and over again to have it ready before we got on the griddle. I don't know if it makes a difference, but that's how I like to do it. As far as a horseradish, it just gives it like a kick, right? It's not about back end or tongue heat. It just gives it almost like a little kick that I like. I almost feel like you could actually double the horseradish and still be okay. I think you can too. Uh, when we did our whole horseradish or uh, when we did our whole tenderloin on the Lone Star and we did that open flame, same thing with our prime ribs. We use horseradish in the crust um, and it comes out fantastic. And I think this is a representation of that. So there you go. You know what? Our horseradish sauce would be really good. Oh. Speaking of horseradish sauce, I think I'm gonna make some. But before I do, if you guys are interested, hit that join button down below. It's a membership program. We thank each and every one of you for taking time for doing so. Check us on The Griddle Group on Facebook. We talk about griddles. Spring is coming up. A lot of new models are coming out. Pretty exciting for sure. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Peace. Golly, that's good, man. Mm-hmm.
Mmm, those are good.